Uh, hello, this is John at FlippingBinary.com demonstrating how to use a digital logic analyzer from Hi Let Go. This device costs about $10 to $15, and if you only work with digital signals and you don't want another large device occupying precious space on your desk or taking a big chunk of money out of your wallet, it's a great substitute for an oscilloscope. On one side, there's an array of 10 pins. Two are for a common ground, and eight are for signal lines. The label clearly indicates the purpose of each pin, so you don't have to guess. And the other side has a mini USB connector, which is what connects the digital logic analyzer to a computer with the included cable. There's also a set of 10 jumper wires, female to female, which can be used to connect the signal lines to whatever you're trying to analyze. You might have to purchase your own set of jumper wires if you want a female to male connection. In this example, we're going to look at serial output from a Raspberry Pi, but any digital signal with 3 to 5 volt levels should work. Most hobbyist electronics, such as Arduinos, fit that criteria. To view the data from this digital logic analyzer in Windows 10, we're going to be using an open source software program called PulseView. There are other options, but this is also available on Mac and Linux, and it's a free, commonly used, actively developed project. To get it, go to https colon slash slash sigrock, that's S-I-G-R-O-K dot org slash wiki slash windows, and download the PulseView nightly build. If you forget the address, just Google PulseView, and click on I'm feeling lucky, which will take you to the project's wiki. Click on downloads on the left and scroll down to the windows section. There you will find the nightly build download link. After installing PulseView, plug in your digital logic analyzer and run a driver installation utility called Zadig. That's spelled Z-A-D-I-G. You'll find it in your start menu as Zadig with Pulse View in parentheses. You might have to look in a folder called Sigrock. There's a second one with a similar name for Windows XP, so make sure you don't accidentally choose the wrong one. When you open this program, you will have to grant it permission to make changes to your computer, so click Yes to that prompt. When it opens, the Digital Logic Analyzer should already be selected in the drop down list. So you can just click on Install Driver. When I did it the first time, PulseView still couldn't see the Digital Logic Analyzer was plugged in. So I just ran the utility again and clicked Install WCID Driver, even though no device was listed in the drop-down menu. You might also have to fuss with this driver installation a few times before you get it to work, but just be patient with it and read the FAQ in the website if you run into trouble. You could also try rebooting and unplugging and plugging in the Digital Logic Analyzer to see if that fixes the problem. After installing the driver, you can open PulseView. Check to make sure Solier Logic is selected in this drop-down menu. That's how this Digital Logic Analyzer appears in the list. If it is missing, you've probably got a driver problem and need to run Zadig again. The default settings for how many samples and how quickly to take samples will probably need to be adjusted for your purposes. In my case, I'm reading 57,600 baud UART data. A 20 kHz sample rate obviously isn't going to cut it, so I'm going to be increasing that to 1 MHz. If you have enough RAM, there probably isn't any harm in sampling way too often, but you will have trouble if you don't sample often enough. To start collecting data, click on Run. Now PulseView will collect data until it has the number of samples you requested, or you click Stop. If you want, you can click on the Configure Channels button and hide the unused channels, but that's not necessary. After you have your data, or before if you want, you can add a protocol decoder. This is by far the best part about using PulseView. Looking at logic level changes is great, but I don't want to have to be manually decoding the signal and figuring out if it's correct. We're looking at a UART signal, so let's add the UART decoder. You can change the decoder's settings by clicking on its label. I recommend setting the baud rate before associating it with a signal because it will re-decode the signal every time you make even the slightest change to the configuration, which is kind of annoying while you're trying to type. 
In this case, we're using D0 for the transmit line and aren't using the receive line because it isn't receiving any data anyway. As soon as you attach the signal, you can see the decoder go to work. Click off the decoder settings when you're ready to dismiss it. We can zoom the data in and out with the scroll wheel and drag the chart around with the mouse button to get a better view of the data. As you can see, the decoder shows us each discrete data value. Hexadecimal format might not be a convenient way to display it for you, so you could also choose decimal, octal, binary, or even ASCII. This has been John at FlippingBinary.com demonstrating the Digital Logic Analyzer from Highlet Go. If you found this useful, please leave some feedback.